Neptune, in a way, was almost a relief because it, it wasn't featureless. <laughs> Neptune, named after the Roman deity of the sea, is the farthest planet from the Sun. Prior to Pluto's demotion from planet rank by the International Astronomical Union, it held this distinction. You can't see Neptune with the naked eye from Earth. It's one of just two planets. Because of this, it was the first planet to be found by mathematical prediction. Equatorial distance on Neptune is four times that of Earth. It weighs 17 times as much but has the same density. Neptune has 11 moons, while Earth only has one. The Voyager 2 spacecraft, the Hubble Space Telescope, and now the James Webb Space Telescope have allowed us unprecedented views of Neptune. What have we learned about this part of our solar system? Join us as we explore how NASA has made an unexpected discovery on Neptune, the windswept eighth planet from the Sun. The blue gas giant in our solar system is far larger than Earth, with a mass more than 17 times that of Earth and a volume almost 58 times that of Earth. Water, ammonia, and methane ice form a slushy fluid that encases the rocky center of Neptune. Galileo Galilei was among the first to recognize Neptune as a celestial body, albeit he mistook it for a star because of its apparent slow motion. According to a description produced by academics at the University of St. Andrews in Scotland, in 1846, French astronomer Urbain Jean-Joseph Le Verrier approximated the location of Neptune by observing gravity-induced disruptions in the motions of Uranus. Le Verrier and the English astronomer John Couch Adams independently arrived at the conclusion that Neptune must have existed around the same period. The mathematical forecasts that each professor made on Neptune's existence were substantially identical. Le Verrier then shared the results of his calculations with German astronomer Johann Gottfried Galle, who, along with his assistant Heinrich Darrest, confirmed Le Verrier's predictions by observing Neptune via the telescope at his Berlin observatory and identifying the planet. Neptune, the Roman deity of the sea, was chosen as the name for this new globe to make it consistent with the other planets in the sky, as recommended by Le Verrier. Voyager 2 was the only spacecraft to ever pass past Neptune, and it did so in 1989. There are still many unanswered questions concerning the cold blue planet, like what causes its brisk winds and why its magnetic field is asymmetrical. Besides the fact that Neptune is a planet in our own solar system, astronomers are curious about it because it can help them with their research into extrasolar planets. In particular, astronomers want to know if other larger worlds besides Earth can support life. Neptune, like Earth, has a rocky core, but its thicker atmosphere makes life as we know it impossible there. The astronomical community is still trying to pin down just how much mass a planet must have before it can absorb enough gas from its surroundings to make life there impossible. In addition to the absorption of red light by methane in the mostly hydrogen-helium atmosphere, an as-yet-unidentified substance contributes to the brilliant blue hue of the planet's cloud cover. Scientists have determined that a day on Neptune lasts just less than 16 hours by analyzing the cloud patterns of the gas giant. With a radius of 15,599.4 miles, the average distance from its center to its surface, Neptune is the fourth biggest planet in our solar system. However, due to its spheroid form, Neptune has a smaller radius at its poles than at its equator. Due to its elliptical oval orbit, Neptune is often 30 times as far from the Sun as Earth is from the Sun, making it undetectable to the human eye. Neptune's orbit around the Sun takes 165 Earth years. Winds on Neptune can exceed 1,500 miles per hour, the fastest ever measured in the solar system. This is despite the fact that Neptune is the farthest planet from the Sun and so receives very little sunlight to help warm and drive its atmosphere. In 1989, Voyager 2 observed a big dark storm in Neptune's southern hemisphere that appeared to be connected to these winds. Scientists believe that compressed carbon in the form of diamonds generates a diamond rain occurrence on Neptune and Uranus due to the extreme temperatures and pressures on these frozen giants. In 2017, scientists were able to recreate laboratory conditions that would lead to the diamond formation, lending credence to the idea that diamond rain happens on Neptune and Uranus. When compared to Neptune's spin axis, 
the magnetic poles are tilted at an angle of about 47 degrees. This causes great fluctuations in the magnetic field, which is about 27 times stronger than Earth's. Can you tell what element Neptune is composed of? Methane, ethane, acetylene, and a few other hydrocarbons make up a minor fraction of the measurable atmosphere, while hydrogen and helium make up around 80% and 15% respectively. However, the composition must alter as you descend further within the planet, since the heavier elements are predicted to be present at higher depths by the bigger overall bulk density. Uranus and Neptune are only around 10, 20% hydrogen and helium by mass, and 80 to 90% heavier elements. Based on what we know about the chemical building blocks of the solar system, we can deduce that these heavier elements consist primarily of methane, ammonia, and water that form ices, along with a small number of elements that combine to make rocks and metals. However, the distribution of the elements and their relative abundances, such as the percentage of ice to rock in the planet's bowels, remain a mystery. If Neptune is the farthest planet from the Sun, why isn't it the coldest? Surprisingly, considering their composition and the amount of sunlight they get, both Uranus and Neptune have warmer-than-expected upper atmospheres. There is still no conclusive answer to this lingering riddle. Uranus also appears to have less heat escaping from its deep subsurface and fewer trace gas molecules that absorb sunlight in its upper atmosphere than Neptune. As a result, Uranus experiences a slight cooling, albeit the causes for this are likewise mysterious. Neptune has peculiar rings because they are encircled by bright, thick clumps of dust called arcs, which make them anything but uniform. There are at least five rings around Neptune, and they are all youthful and short-lived. The Gal, Le Verrier, La Celle, Arago, and Adam's rings. Neptune's rings are significantly more unstable than previously assumed, with some rapidly decreasing away according to observations made from Earth, as reported in the journal Icarus. There are at least 14 moons orbiting Neptune, all of which were given names of minor Greek deities and nymphs of the sea. The largest is Triton, which was founded on October 10, 1846, thanks in part to beer. The amateur astronomer who made the discovery, William Lassell, used money he gained as a brewer to buy telescopes. Only Neptune's moon Triton is round. The planet has 13 more moons, and all of them are weird shapes. As the only massive moon in the solar system to orbit its planet counter to its rotation, retrograde orbit, is evidence that Triton may have been a captured dwarf planet rather than a naturally formed moon of Neptune. In millions of years, Triton will get near enough to Neptune for the planet's gravity to rip it apart, as Triton is being pulled closer to Neptune by Neptune's gravity. One of the coldest places in the solar system, Triton has surface temperatures of roughly minus 391 degrees Fahrenheit. But Voyager 2 found geysers shooting ice stuff more than 5 miles into the air, indicating that its core is relatively warm. Researchers are looking into the potential of an ocean beneath the ice moon's surface. Seasons on Triton were found by scientists in 2010. NASA has proposed a new space mission to visit Triton in the coming years. This is unsurprising because one of the most fascinating and entertaining planets in the solar system is Triton. Can you imagine what life on Triton might be like? Like the other gas giants in our solar system, Neptune offers nothing in the way of habitable land. However, Triton, the planet's largest moon, has some promising qualities as a future home for human settlers. Triton's surface, composed largely of rock and nitrogen ice, is seen in images to have cratered and smooth sections coexisting. These flat spots form as Triton's thin atmosphere gently blows around plumes of dust and nitrogen gas that erupt from the moon's crust. However, the risk to anyone standing adjacent to those geysers is unclear. This plume behavior is poorly understood by us. On the other hand, we would rather err on the side of caution and avoid being on the spot where the plume explodes. Triton has very little atmosphere, so even if there were winds, you wouldn't feel them if you stood on the surface. Since Triton has such a thin atmosphere, there is no weather or variation in the color of the sky. The polar regions of Triton receive sunlight for roughly 80 years at a time, as Neptune makes its 165-year journey around the Sun, causing seasonal changes to the surface pressure of Triton. This is because the Sun causes frozen nitrogen, methane, and carbon monoxide on the surface of Triton to sublimate into gas, increasing the atmospheric pressure in the Southern Hemisphere. Since Triton has the coldest known average temperature in the solar system, 
its inhabitants would never experience the changing of the seasons. Triton is unique among the solar system's moons in that it circles in the opposite direction of its parent planet's spin because it didn't develop at the same time as its planet and was likely an item that Neptune caught. A day on Triton is nearly six Earth days long, so if you happen to dwell in a part of the moon that experiences both night and day, you would witness the sunrise in the west and set in the east. Furthermore, Triton's orbit around its planet is inclined, so if you were on the side of the moon that always faces Neptune, you would get a view of not only Neptune's equatorial region, but also its northern polar and southern polar regions, unlike any other moon in the solar system. Furthermore, Neptune would appear ten times larger than our moon, so its features would be easily discernible. A walk around Triton in a straight line would take 70 Earth days, but that's assuming you could get used to walking in Triton's incredibly low gravity, which is about 8% of Earth's gravity or half the moon's. It's unclear if Triton has any interesting geological features you'd want to visit. However, don't count on talking to someone on Earth to pass the time on your walk because it takes four hours for light and radio signals to get from Triton to Earth. Moving on, scientists have discovered a secondary lesser storm on the windswept planet, which they have dubbed Dark Spot Jr. In addition to having some of the most unusual weather in the solar system, Neptune also has the fastest winds ever recorded on any planet, slicing through the atmosphere at speeds of up to 1,100 miles per hour or 1.5 times the speed of sound. Scientists still don't understand why Neptune's atmosphere is so turbulent. In 2018, the Hubble Space Telescope discovered a storm, a dark spot some 4,600 miles across, which has since moved toward the equator and then swooped back up north, possibly due to a piece of the main storm breaking off. When the Voyager 2 spacecraft flew by Neptune in 1989, it is still the only spacecraft to do so, it observed two storms. The original dark spot, a large vortex about the size of the Earth, and a smaller fast-moving storm, nicknamed Scooter. We had enough time on Voyager to follow the feature for about four to five months before the flyby, and throughout that time we saw the giant dark spot oscillate up and down in longitude. That storm was huge, a big monster. The size of the Earth, or larger. Four years later, when the Voyager team finally had access to the Hubble telescope, the storms had faded away. Scientists believe the average lifespan of a Neptune storm is between two and five years, with the length of time it lasts possibly depending on its size. Dark vortices on Neptune extend deep into the planet, like the top of a tall tree whose roots reach all the way down to the icy world's core, allowing the storm to be blown in any direction. Large storms can drift south with the winds or be yanked back up to the north, but as they approach the equator, where the wind fields are even stronger, they can be torn apart. Astronomers can only use Hubble to study Neptune once a year, making it difficult to keep tabs on the volatile atmosphere. As a result, new storms often disappear before we get a chance to study them. There are more questions than answers regarding this blue wonder, and their mysterious disappearance is just one of them, until humanity is able to launch an orbiter around the planet to study the storm's life cycles. Meanwhile, fresh photographs from the orbiting observatory reveal an unusual infrared perspective on Earth. In 2022, the James Webb Space Telescope, the largest and most advanced telescope ever sent into space, trained its strong gold-plated eye on this distant world capturing some of the clearest images of Neptune in 30 years. The telescope took only a few minutes to capture a detailed image of Neptune and another 20 to capture a wider view, showing not only the planet but also an infinite number of galaxies stretching back into the void. The Webb telescope will allow astronomers to measure the reflectivity of the rings, providing unprecedented insight into this distant spectacle. New images may reveal the size and composition of these thin bands, which are likely made of ice and other debris, but this remains to be determined. The ring structure was incredible. Seven of Neptune's 14 moons can be seen in Webb's images as well. In infrared images, Triton's frozen nitrogen surface makes it shine like a star, brighter than Neptune itself because methane dims the planet in infrared light. However, future Webb observations should hint at the composition of Triton's surface, and could show changes indicating geological activity. NASA recently declined to send a mission to study Triton. Astronomers, however, have found evidence of a correlation between Neptune's varying cloud abundance and the 11-year solar cycle, during which the Sun's entangled magnetic fields wax and wane and drive solar activity.
Data from the Lick Observatory in California, the WM Keck Observatory in Hawaii, and NASA's Hubble Space Telescope over the course of 30 years have led to this discovery. These images from the Hubble Space Telescope show the ebb and flow of Neptune's cloud cover over the course of 11 years. The chemical changes are the result of photochemistry, which occurs high in Neptune's upper atmosphere and takes time to form clouds. The solar cycle, in which the sun's level of activity rhythmically rises and falls, is responsible for these cloud fluctuations. Despite being the farthest major planet from the sun and receiving sunlight at a fraction of the intensity that Earth does, Neptune's cloudy global weather appears to be driven by solar activity rather than the planet's four seasons, which each last about 40 years. Clouds are currently very sparse on Neptune, with the exception of those near the planet's south pole. Astronomers led by the University of California at Berkeley found that the abundance of clouds typically seen at the mid-latitudes of the icy giant began to fade in 2019. Chavez and her team evaluated Keck Observatory photos from 2002 to 2022, Hubble Space Telescope archived observations from 1994, and data from the Lick Observatory in California from 2018 to 2019 to track Neptune's visual progression. Keck's observations have been supplemented in recent years by data from Hubble's Outer Planet Atmosphere's Legacy, OPAL program, and the Twilight Zone program. The images show a fascinating relationship between the solar cycle and the seasonal changes in Neptune's cloud cover. The solar cycle is the 11-year period during which the sun's magnetic field flips as it becomes more tangled like a ball of yarn. This is seen in the increasing number of sunspots and solar flare activity. The team discovered that two years after the peak of the solar cycle, an increasing number of clouds appear on Neptune, and that there is a positive correlation between the number of clouds and the ice giant's brightness due to sunlight reflecting off of it. These extraordinary results provide the greatest evidence yet of a correlation between the sun's cycle and Neptune's cloud cover, lending credence to the notion that the planet's clouds are the result of UV photons at sufficiently high levels causing a photochemical reaction. Further research into the physics and chemistry that led to Neptune's dynamic appearance is made possible by the combined data from Hubble, the Webb Space Telescope, the Keck Observatory, and the Lick Observatory, and this may help astronomers gain a better understanding not only of Neptune, but also of exoplanets, as many of the planets beyond our solar system are thought to have Neptune-like qualities. Thanks for watching another episode of Voyager. While you're still here, make sure to click the video on your screen for more mind-blowing videos about space.